Hello there friends, it's Ashley here from The Loopy Lamb and TheLoopyLamb.com and thanks so much for stopping by the channel today. It's week 18 of the 2023 Amigurumi Advent Calendar Crochet Along and this week we're making a fun summer accessory for our dolls. We're going to be making bucket hats. This project is quick and easy and beginner friendly. So without further ado, let's hop on into what materials you'll need to follow along with today's tutorial. To follow along with today's tutorial, you'll need the following materials. You'll need worsted weight yarn of your preference in two colors of your preference. Today's sample I'll be crocheting in the following colors. I'll be using Dove Heather and Cornflower from We Crochet's Bravo Worsted Weight line. You'll also need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, and a stitch marker. I recommend these locking stitch markers when you're working in a spiral so that way your stitch marker isn't prone to falling out of your work. We'll also need a three and a half millimeter or E crochet hook or whatever crochet hook that you've been using to match the gauge in all of the crochet along patterns to date. If you need more information on the gauge for these patterns, you can find that over on my blog, theloopylamb.com in the written version of this pattern, which I've also linked in the description box below. So let me clear my workspace here and we'll hop on into crocheting our striped bucket hat for our dolls. To start our doll's bucket hat, pick whatever color you'd like to be the main color for your hat. For me, I've decided to use this light gray color, which is called Dove Heather Gray. We're going to start by creating a magic circle. And now if I'm going too quickly for you when I do this, feel free to slow the video down using the speed features on the YouTube video here, or you can also check out the how to do a magic circle tutorial that I have here on the channel. To start your magic circle, you're going to lay your yarn tail across the palm of your hand and pin it down with your thumb. Then grabbing the working end of the yarn, which means that it's the yarn that's still attached to the ball, we're going to wrap it around our fingers from front to back and then back to the front again. And once you get to the front of your fingers, you're going to cross the yarn over itself like so to create an X. Then we're going to flip our hands over, bringing the yarn with it. And then I like to pin this strand down between my point, uh, middle finger and my ring finger here. Then we're going to grab our crochet hook and we're going to insert our hook under the first strand and over the second. Then we're going to drag the second strand under the first like so. And then we're going to do a little twist with our hook. So that way we create another X here in the yarn. Then we're going to use the tip of our hook to reach down and grab that working yarn to yarn over our hook. And then we're going to pull that yarn through the loop on our hook. And that completes your magic circle. So then we can just transfer all of that off of our fingers. And once you have your magic circle off your fingers, you're going to grab the yarn tail and pull it out of the ring. So that way you have a nice clean ring here to work into. And now we're ready to start our first round. For round one, we're going to work six single crochets into this magic circle. And so when we're doing working into the circle, when you're using a regular smooth yarn like this, it's uh, ideal for you to work over the loose strand of yarn or your yarn tail there. So that way it can help us pull this circle tight or close tightly. So what we're going to do is now we're going to single crochet six times into the ring. So inserting our hook into the ring, we're going to yarn over our hook and pull up a loop. You should have two loops on your hook. Then we're going to yarn over and pull that yarn through both loops on our hook. And that is your first single crochet completed. And now we're going to do this five more times. So back into the ring, yarn over and pull up a loop. There's two loops on your hook, then yarn over and pull through both loops. And that's your second single crochet completed. And again, into the ring, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. All right, we're halfway there. We have three more to do. There's our fourth, fifth, 
and sixth. And if you need to double count your stitches to make sure that you have enough, you just turn your stitches so you have these little V's facing upwards so you can clearly see them. And counting your V's, you should have six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And now we know we have the correct number of stitches. When you have your six stitches, we are going to grab the yarn tail that we crocheted over and we're going to just pull that nice and tight so we don't have a hole in the top of our hat. So this is what your piece should look like at this point. Now make sure you have your stitch marker handy because we're going to be using that in just a moment. So as we go into round two, you're going to need that. So working into round two, the instructions say we're going to do a single crochet increase six times, which means because we have six stitches, we're doing a single crochet increase into each stitch around. And I'll show you how to do that now. Working into this first stitch here, and it can be tricky if you did that tightly, which I almost always do. There we go. So you're going to insert your hook under er, both strands of your V into the first stitch. And you're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. And then yarn over and pull through both loops. That's your first single crochet completed. And this is where I recommend you grab your stitch marker and place that stitch marker into the stitch you just completed. Because we want to mark the first stitch of our round when we're working in a spiral. And as we work like subsequent rounds, we're going to move the stitch marker up because it's important to always keep track of that first stitch. So when we're doing a single crochet increase, that means we're doing two single crochet stitches in the same stitch. And now we've only done one stitch here. So we, that means we need to go back into the same stitch to single crochet in that stitch again. So inserting our hook back into that same stitch, we're yarning over and pulling up a loop. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through both loops. And that's your single crochet increase completed. Now, anytime you're doing a single crochet increase, again, if some people get confused by that, you're just putting two single crochets into the same stitch. So we'll do that again into the next stitch. We'll single crochet once. And then back into the same stitch, we're going to single crochet again. All right, so we're doing this in each stitch around and again into the next stitch, we're working two single crochets. There's one. And there's two. Now, if you'd like to pause your video and work a single crochet increase or two single crochets into each sti remaining stitch we have at the of the round here, at the end of the round, you should have 12 single crochet stitches and I'll meet you back here at the end of the round to show you what we're moving on to next. All right, so I just finished my last stitch of round two. I have 12 single crochets. And again, if you need to count your stitches, just find those Vs at the tops of the stitches and count them around. If you have 12 at the end of the round, you should be good to go. Now moving into round three, we're going to move that stitch marker out of the way temporarily while we work our first stitch. So we're going to work one single crochet into the first stitch. And when I'm done that stitch, I'm going to move my stitch marker up and into that stitch. Now in this next stitch here, we're going to do the single crochet increase again. And so we've done this already multiple times. So we'll do this relatively quickly. The single crochet increase is two single crochet stitches worked into the same stitch. So there's the first part of our increase and here is the second. All right, so what we've just completed is one single crochet in the first stitch and a single crochet increase into the next. Now, what we that is a repeat that we're going to be repeating all the way around our piece. So the repeat goes one single crochet in the first stitch and a single crochet increase into the next. And I'll show you what how to do that again. So we're working one single crochet into the first stitch and a single crochet increase into the next. And again, that increase is two single crochets worked into the same stitch. And that's 
another repeat completed. The instructions say that we need to do six of these repeats around and we've already done two. So we need to do this four more times. So our next repeat starts again, one single crochet into the first stitch and a single crochet increase into the next. And that's another pattern repeat completed. So if you'd like to pause your video and work one single crochet into the first stitch and a single crochet increase into the next until the you have no more stitches to be worked in this round, you should have a tw uh, 18 stitches at the end of this round. And I'll meet you back here in just a moment to show you how we're moving on to round three or round four, sorry. So I just did my last stitch of round three and I have 18 single crochets around my piece and we're moving into round four. We're going to move this stitch marker out of the way and to start round four, we're going to work one single crochet into that first stitch. And again, we're gonna pause for just a moment to grab our stitch marker and place that into the stitch there. Now we're going to work a single crochet increase into the next stitch. Okay, at this point we should have three stitches. Now we're going to start a pattern repeat that we're going to do five times. So this repeat starts with one single crochet into each of the first two stitches. So working into that first stitch, we're working one single crochet, and into the next stitch, we're working one single crochet. Into the next stitch, we're going to do a single crochet increase. So again, that's those two single crochets into the same stitch. And that's our first repeat completed. So our next repeat, it will be the same. Two single crochets followed by a single crochet increase. So let's do that again. One single crochet into the first stitch, one single crochet into the second, followed by a single crochet increase into the next. Okay, so now we've done that twice and we need to do that three more times. So if you'd like to pause your video and do three more repeats of one single crochet into the first two stitches followed by a single in crochet increase, when you've repeated this three more times, there will be one stitch left to be worked in this round. So if you'd like to meet me back when you're done your repeats, I'll show you what we'll be doing to finish off this round before moving on to the next. All right, so I'm back and I've done all of my repeats and I have one stitch left to be worked in this round. And to finish this round, we're just going to work one single crochet into that last stitch. At the end of this round, you should have 24 single crochet stitches around your piece. Now moving into round five, we have a repeat we're going to do six times. So let's move this stitch marker out of the way and we're going to start our first repeat with three single crochets. So that means we're going to put one single crochet into each of the first three stitches. So here is our first, oops. Moving up our stitch marker here. And then we're going to work one single crochet into each of the next two stitches. All right, so we've got three single crochet stitches so far. All right, now we're gonna finish our repeat by working a single crochet increase into the next stitch. So at this point we have five stitches in this round and that's the end of our repeat. So our repeat for this round is three single crochets followed by a single crochet increase. And the instructions say we're supposed to do that six times all the way around. So we've already done this once. So I'll show you how to do this again. So we're going to work one single crochet into each of the first three stitches. And there's three. And we're going to do a single crochet increase into the next stitch. And that's our second repeat. So we're going to do this one more time and then I'll leave you to uh, do this on your own. So again, we're doing one single crochet into each of the first three stitches. Five, 
followed by a single crochet increase into the next stitch. So if you'd like to pause your video and repeat that pattern, three single crochets followed by a single crochet increase three more times, I'll meet you back at the end of the row to show you how we're moving into round six. Then at the end of round five, you should have 30 crochet stitches. So I just finished the last stitch of round five. I've got 30 single crochets and I'm moving on to round six. To start round six, we're going to work one single crochet into each of the first two stitches. So there's our first, grab my stitch marker, and here is our second. Now we're going to work a single crochet increase into the next stitch. And now we have a repeat that we need to do five times. And that repeat is one single crochet into each of the first four stitches, followed by a single crochet increase. So let's do that now. So working one single crochet into that first stitch and each of the next three stitches. There's two, three, and four. Now we're going to work a single crochet increase into the next stitch. And that's our first repeat. We have to do this now four more times. So working one single crochet into each of the next four stitches. There's one. Three. And four. And now we're going to work a single crochet increase into the next stitch. And now we have to do this again, one single crochet into each of the first four stitches. Followed by a single crochet increase into the next. Now we're going to do that again, one single crochet into each of the first four stitches. followed by a single crochet increase into the next. And now we're on our last repeat. We're going to do that again, four single crochets followed by an increase or a single crochet increase. There's our increase stitch. And now you'll see we have two stitches left in this round that need to be worked. And we're just going to work one single crochet into each of those stitches. And so we're at the end of the round now and you should have 36 single crochet stitches around your piece and we're ready to move into round seven. We have a repeat that we're going to do in round seven, a total of six times. And that start, that repeat starts with working one single crochet into each of the first five stitches. So let's work our first single crochet here and move up our stitch marker. So we've got our first stitch done and now we're going to do one single crochet into the next four stitches. Now that we have five single crochets, we're going to work a single crochet increase into the next stitch. And that's the end of our first repeat. We're working one single crochet into each of the first five stitches, followed by a single crochet increase. We need to do that a total of six times. Since we've already done this once, we have to do this five more times. So I'll show you how to do this again, working one single crochet into each of the next five stitches. There's one. three, and five. And now we're going to work a single crochet increase into the next stitch. So we'll do this one more time together and then I'll leave you to pause your video and finish the round. Again, we're working one single crochet into each of the next five stitches. There's one, three, 
and five. And now we're going to work a single crochet increase into the next stitch. So that's the end of our repeat. We need to do this three more times. And at the end of this round, you should have 36 single crochet stitches before moving on. So if you'd like to pause your video and continue with doing your last three repeats of five single crochets followed by a single crochet increase, I'll meet you back here in just a moment to show you how we're moving on to the next step. Alright, so we are ready to move into round eight. And round eight starts by working one single crochet into each of the first three stitches. So let's do our first stitch here. And move up our stitch marker. And then we'll work one single crochet into each of the next two stitches. In our next stitch, uh, goodness, in our next stitch here, we'll do a single crochet increase. Right, so at this point we should have five stitches. And now we have a repeat that we need to do a total of five times around our piece. And that repeat is six single crochets followed by a single crochet increase. So let's work on that first repeat now. So we're going to work one single crochet into each of the first six stitches. There's three. And there's six. Now that we have six single crochets, we're going to work a single crochet increase into the next stitch. And that's our first repeat completed. Now we have to do this four more times. And so again, we're going to work one single crochet into each of the first six stitches. Now that we have our six stitches, we're going to work a single crochet increase into the next stitch. All right, so we now need to do this three more times. So if you'd like to pause your video and do um, three more repeats of these six single crochets, followed by a single crochet increase, you'll find when you're done your repeats, you should have three stitches needing to be worked. And I'll meet you back here after our repeats to show you how we're going to finish off those last three stitches. All right, so I'm done my repeats here that we're working on in round eight, and we have three stitches left to be worked in this round. We're just going to work one single crochet into each of those remaining three stitches. At the end of this round, you should have 48 single crochet stitches around your piece. And now we're moving on to round nine. For round nine, we're going to start by working one single crochet into each of the first 11 stitches. So let's work our first stitch here, one single crochet, and then we're moving up our stitch marker. And now we're going to work one single crochet into each of the next 10 stitches. All right, so we have our 11 single crochet stitches, and now we're going to work a single crochet increase into the next stitch. All right. And that's our first repeat. We need to do this repeat a total of four times in this round. So we're going to do that again, and that repeat verbally is just 11 single crochets followed by a single crochet increase. So I'll show you how to do that again working one single crochet into each of the next 11 stitches. There's one, three, five, seven, nine, and 
11. And now we're going to work a single crochet increase into the next stitch. And that's our second repeat completed. So if you'd like to pause your video and do two more repeats of 11 single crochets followed by a single crochet increase, you should have 52 stitches at the end of this round. I'll meet you back here at the end of this round to show you how we're moving into round 10. So I just finished my last stitch of round nine and I have my 52 stitches and I wanted to take a moment before we move on to talk about what our fabric looks like at this point. So if your hat or your, your piece so far is starting to have the edges curl inwards, uh, that's totally normal and you should expect that to be happening at this point. And why that's happening is because in the last round we only did four increases instead of six. So our fabric is starting to kind of fold in on itself because it doesn't have enough increases to remain flat. So what we're doing now is we're going to start building the sides of our hat. And so for in round 10, we're going to be doing something slightly different in order to um, create a nicer edge on our hat. So to start round 11 here, or sorry, goodness, round 10, we're going to be inserting our hook into a different location of our stitches. And that's going to create a nice line around the crown of our hat and help to fold our fabric down to create a nice side for our hat. So the instructions say we're going to work in the back loop only, and we're going to work one single crochet into each stitch around. Now to find the back loop only, we're going to flip our piece up towards us so we can see the V's at the top of our stitches. And you can see that there's two strands to the V. There's one close to you and there's one furthest from you. The one that is furthest from you is called the back loop. The one that's closest to you is called the front loop. Makes a lot of sense, right? So when we're working into the back loop only, we're inserting our hook through the top of our stitch, inserting it out towards the back of the fabric. So we're all picking up only that back loop. And I'll show you that again. We're working in through the top of the stitch and pushing out towards the back of our fabric and picking up that back loop only. And then we would just single crochet as we normally do. Okay, and we move up our stitch marker and that is our first stitch. Now you'll start to see as we're crocheting that you'll have a little line created by the front loops of the stitches and that's totally normal and you'll see that as you progress. So working into the next stitch, we're inserting our hook through the top of the stitch, picking up that back loop only and then single crocheting as normal. Okay, and then again, we're doing this in every stitch back loop only, single crochet. And I'm just going to do a few more here. If, you, if you're already familiar with this, you can pause your video and do one single crochet in the back loop in each stitch around and meet me here at the end of the round. But I just want to do a few more stitches here to show you what your piece will look like. So you can see that we have this gentle line here across our piece. And as we're working, you might notice that your stitches will kind of fold downwards. And this is how we kind of get that bucket hat effect is that we're uh, no longer increasing. You're not going to have a super rounded top. It's going to create more of a flat top to your hat. So if you'd like to pause your video and work one single crochet in the back loop only in each stitch around, I'll meet you back here at the end of the round and show you what we're going to be doing moving into round 11. All right, so I just finished all my stitches for round 10. We still have 52 stitches in our piece. We don't have any changes in our stitch count at this point. Now for rounds 11 through 14, we're going, they're all going to be worked the exact same. We're just going to work one single crochet into each stitch around, but we're back working under both loops of the stitch, just as we did at the beginning. So working under both loops, we're going to single crochet, move up our stitch marker, and then we're going to continue to work one single crochet into each stitch around. You should have 52 stitches at the end of each round. So if you'd like to pause your video and do rounds 11 through 14, I'll meet you back here before you do the last stitch of round 14, because we're going to be changing colors moving into round 15. So work rounds 11 through 14, but leave that last stitch of round 14 unfinished because we're going to be changing colors. So I'll meet you back here in just a few moments. 
Um, so I'm just at the end of round 14 now, and we have one stitch left to be worked. And as I had stated before, don't work that last stitch because we're going to change colors. Now, when you're changing colors in crochet, you want to change your colors using the last yarn over of the stitch before it says you're supposed to change colors. So this last stitch here is we're going to start our single crochet as we normally would. Okay. But we're going to stop here on this last yarn over because we need to use the new color. So what you're going to do is you're going to lay that new color. Goodness, it's stuck together. We're going to lay that new color over our hook like so, and then we're just going to pull it through the stitch, right? They're doing our last yarn over in the new color. And now you can just continue to move on in the new stitch or the new color. And now for rounds 15 and 16, we're just going to work one single crochet into each stitch around as we previously were, but we're using this new color. So um, you might find that your stitches are looser, this last stitch here because of the color change. So hold the both tails down behind your work. And then I'm just, I like to crochet over all the tails, at least in that first stitch here, which helps to help to hold them in place. I'm going to move up my stitch marker and then I can just continue to crochet along. Now I'm going to crochet over my tail in the new color, but not the old color because I'm going to show you how to also carry this yarn color up. So if you'd like to do round 15 and meet me at the end of round 15 before moving into round 16, um, I'll show you how to pull, carry that color up the inside of your work. And again, for round 15, we're just working one single crochet into each stitch around. So I'll meet you back here at the end of the round to show you how to carry your other color up inside your piece. So I just finished my last stitch of round 15 and as promised we're back here because I want to show you how to pull or to carry your color up the inside of your piece because we're going to be changing colors again at the end of round 16. So it's not a huge distance to carry your yarn and it saves you having to cut your yarn and weave in your yarn tails. If that's what your preference is, that's totally fine. You can go ahead and do that. But I like to do this for my piece because it's such a short distance. It's not going to be that big of a deal if somebody sees the inside of your work. So there's a few ways that you can do this, but I'm going to show you my favorite way because it's just quick and easy and no fuss, no mess. So when I'm going to work the first stitch of my round here, as I'm going to start my single crochet as I normally would. All right. I'm going to stop at this point when I have two loops on my hook. I'm just going to hold this uh, old color out of the way. I'm going to bring the new color and I'm going to cross it over the color I'm currently working with. All right. So I'm bringing it around and holding it over the top here. Then I'm going to use my color I'm working with and just cr finish my stitch as normal. Now I'm going to move, put my stitch marker in here and I'll show you what that does. So you can't see that what I've done to carry up my yarn on the right side of the fabric. And when you turn over, if you have it, if it's too loose, you can give it a little tug. Make sure you're not pulling it too tight because it will cinch your fabric, but you just want it to lay flat against your piece. And all it does is it creates that little um, line here. And what it does is it brings it up to the level of this round. So because now when we go to change colors in the last stitch of round 16, your yarn is there and it's accessible and you don't need to cut your yarn tails. So now you can just uh, work one single crochet into each stitch around using this cornflower color or whatever your accent color is for your hat. And then meet me back here before you do the last stitch of round 16 because we're going to change colors moving into round 17. So pause your video and I'll meet you back here in just a few moments. All right, so we are at the end of round 16 and we have one stitch left to be worked. But as I mentioned earlier, we're going to be changing colors. So we're going to start our single crochet as we normally would in this color here. We're going to drop the old color to bring in the new color. And because I've carried that up the inside of my piece, it's easily accessible. So I'm going to yarn over hook with the new color and pull that through my stitch. And then I'm just going to pull the teal yarn down a little bit to even that out. 
And then we're going to be doing something slightly different here for round 17. All of our stitches in round 17 are going to be worked in the front loop only. And if you remember, we when we did the back loop only, the loop that's closest to us in our piece is the front loop. So all of our stitches will be working, will be worked into the front loop. To pick up the front loop, you will insert your hook under and up through the stitch to pick up that front loop. Now we're going to work one single crochet into each of the first two stitches to start round 17. So working into the front loop only, we're going to single crochet as normal. And then we're going to bring our stitch marker and place that into the stitch. Now working into the front loop only is going to flare our fabric outwards and creating the brim of our hat. And we're going to work our next single crochet here into the front loop of the next stitch. Okay. Then we are going to work a pattern a total of seven times. Our pattern starts with a single crochet increase into the next stitch. And again, we're working into the front loop only. And then we're going to work one single crochet into each of the next six stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, and six. All right, and that's our first repeat completed. We're going to need to do six more repeats. So again, we're doing that single crochet increase into the first stitch, and then one single crochet into each of the next six stitches. All right, so and as you can see, if you're taking a look at your fabric, this row, as we continue to progress, will want to kind of push outwards like so. So if you'd like to pause your video and do five more repeats of that single crochet increase, followed by six single crochets, again, worked into the front loop only, I'll meet you back here at the end of your repeats and show you how we're going to work the last stitch of the round. All right, so I'm back and I have one stitch left to be worked in round 17, and we're just going to work a single crochet increase into that last stitch, again in the front loop only. At the end of this round, you should have 60 single crochet stitches. Now, we're moving into round 18, we're going to be working back under both loops again, and we're going to have a repeat that we need to do. We're going to do nine single crochets followed by a single crochet increase. So we'll start with our first single crochet, moving up our stitch marker, and then we're going to work one single crochet into each of the next eight stitches. So that is the end of our first repeat. We have our nine single crochets followed by a single crochet increase. And as the instructions say, we need to do this six times total. So we need to do this five more times. So I'll show you how to do this again. We're gonna work one single crochet into each of the next nine stitches. So now that I have my nine single crochets, I'm going to work a single crochet increase into the next stitch. Okay, and now we have to do this four more times. So if you'd like to pause your video and work four more repeats of nine single crochets, followed by a single crochet increase, I'll meet you back here at the end of the round to show you how we're moving into the next round. And at the end of this round, you should have 66 single crochet stitches. All right, so I'll meet you back here in just a moment. So I'm at the end of round 18, I have my 66 single crochets. And I'm realizing that I forgot to mention that we're not gonna be using your accent color anymore. So if um, you haven't already done so, you can cut the yarn tail, leaving a tail of at least four to six inches. So that way you can weave in that end later. 
That's a, unfortunately, it's old, it's a designing habit because I don't weave my ends in for, or cut my yarn until I absolutely have to. And I do apologize for not mentioning that sooner. So now we're moving into round 19. We're going to start round 19 by working one single crochet into each of the first five stitches. So there's our first. Moving up our stitch marker here. And then we're going to work one single crochet into each of the next four stitches. So now we have our five single crochets completed. We're going to do a single crochet increase into the next stitch. And now we have a repeat that we're going to do a total of five times. And our repeat starts with 10 single crochets followed by a single crochet increase. So let's do that now. So working one single crochet into each of the next 10 stitches. There's one, three, five, Seven, All right, so there's our 10 single crochet stitches. And now we're going to do a single crochet increase into the next stitch. And that's our first repeat. Now we need to do that four more times. And again, that's 10 single crochets followed by a single crochet increase. So let's do that again together. There's our first stitch. Our third, and there's our tenth single crochet. And then in our next stitch here, we're going to do a single crochet increase. So if you'd like to pause your video and do three more repeats of 10 single crochets followed by a single crochet increase, I'll meet you back here at the end of the repeats to show you how we're going to finish off the last five stitches of this round. So I've done my five repeats of the 10 single crochets followed by an increase. And now I have five stitches left to be worked in this round. And I'm just going to work one single crochet into each of those remaining stitches. All right, so now that we have the row completed, you should have 72 stitches at the end of round 19, and we're ready to finish off our hat. So we're gonna grab our scissors here, and I'm going to cut a yarn tail of at least six inches long, and I'm going to cut my yarn. We're going to use our crochet hook to pull the yarn all the way through that last stitch. And then I'm going to put my hook off to the side because I won't need it any longer. I'm grabbing my tapestry needle and I'm going to thread the end of the yarn onto the tapestry needle. So what we're going to do next here is we're going to do a technique called the invisible finish, or I've also seen it called the invisible join. Um, and what it does is it's going to um, even up this step that you can see when you get when you work in a continuous spiral, right? You can see that there's a bit of a step from this part of the fabric up to here. And this technique is going to even that out. So using your tapestry needle, you're going to skip the next stitch and you're going to insert it under both strands of the second stitch of the round, just like so. Then we're going to pull the yarn tail all the way through. Now what this technique does is it duplicates the look of this first stitch here using your yarn tail, but it also pulls this side of the fabric down to even out that step. So I'm gonna hold tension here with my finger on the yarn so that way it's not gonna slip away from here. And then I'm going to find the last stitch of the round and I'm going to insert my tapestry needle through the top of the stitch and out through the back loop only. Now, I wanna make sure I'm not going through the center of my yarn tail, so I'm just moving my yarn tail off to the side so I know that I'm not going through the center. So I'm just gonna pull that all the way through. 
and I'm going to give that a gentle tug until it looks like another crochet stitch. Okay, so you can kind of might need to finagle that a little bit. And there we go. That looks just like the first stitch. And then now that I'm done, I'm going to flip my piece over and then I'll just weave in my ends as I normally would. All right, so let me just pull this inside a little bit so that way I can show you that this is what it looks like. You will have a tiny little bump there, but it's barely noticeable um, now that you've used the invisible join. So let's flip our hat out here. And uh, this is what your hat should look like at this point. And you just need to weave in your ends. And that's it. I hope that you enjoyed making your doll's bucket hat. If you did, please hit that like button and please consider subscribing to this channel. If you enjoy free crochet patterns, please check out my blog, theloopylam.com, where I have over 100 free crochet patterns, many of which include step-by-step -step video tutorials just like this one. If you have any comments or questions, I would absolutely love to hear from you. Please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, friends. Happy hooking, and I'll see you next time.